Hello, uh, welcome to today's class. In today's class, we will talk about admissible and consistent heuristics. So an admissible heuristic is one that never overestimate the cost to reach the goal. So admissible heuristics are optimistic by nature because they think uh, that the cost of solving the problem is less than it actually is. So you already know that um, if we are at a node N and we have not yet explored the path to reach the goal node, so we have not searched beyond node N. So in that case, we do not know what would be the actual cost of the path from node N to the goal node. Now, since we do not know the actual cost, we use a heuristic function to estimate the cost. So the heuristic function will give us some value, uh, which will be an estimate of the cost from node N to the goal node. So this is only an estimate, it is not the actual cost. Now if our heuristic function is such that the value returned by the heuristic function is always less than or equal to the actual cost for every node, then that heuristic function is an admissible heuristic. So if your admissible heuristic, uh, if your heuristic function do not overestimate, then we call the heuristic function to be an admissible heuristic function. Let me explain this using uh, using the heuristic function a straight line distance that we studied in the previous class. Uh, straight, lines, straight line distance was a heuristic function that we used uh, for the route finding problem. So if you have to find a route from a particular city to a destination city, uh, there we may use the straight line distance as a heuristic function. We have discussed this in the previous class. Now this uh, heuristic function straight line distance is actually an admissible heuristic. So let me explain why. So in the route finding problem, we have a start node and we have a goal node. So for example, we may have a start city and we may have a destination city. And then we use our search algorithm to find a route from the start city to the destination city. And as the search algorithm proceeds, it may, uh, we may be at a particular situation where we, we have now selected node N for expansion. So the next node that would be expanded is node N, which means we have already determined what is the cost of the function, uh, what is the cost of the path from the start node up to node n because we have already seen and the different path that could lead us from start node to node n and since we have now selected node n for expansion we we know the actual cost of the path from node n from the start node to node n However, uh, and, and actually uh, the Zn, uh, Z of n represents this actual cost. Uh, so we have not yet found any path from node n to goal node. That's what the search algorithm will do next. Uh, so we have not explored uh, beyond node n. Uh, since we have not explored yet, so we don't know what would be uh, the actual cost of the path from node n to goal node. So since we have uh, we have not searched yet, so we do not know what would be the actual cost. Um, and since we do not know the real cost of the path, all we can do is only estimate what may be the cost. And we use the heuristic function to do this estimation. And for this route finding problem, we use the straight line distance as one of the heuristic function. 
so what we do is we consider the straight line distance between the two city as an estimate of the real cost from node n to the goal node so here i show the straight line distance between the two cities node n and the destination city now your actual path from node n to goal node may not be a straight line path it may be a straight line path but it need not be a straight line path so actual uh, path may be something like this it may have some curves and bend and then using this path we will reach the destination city or it may be some other path which also have some curves and bends so this may be your real path from from city and to the destination city uh, it need not be the straight line path that we had used as our heuristic function so real path may be something different from the straight line path but we use the straight line distance as the heuristic function as an estimate of the cost to reach from node end to goal node so now if we consider this different path um, we will see that all these different path that we have considered which have some curves and bends the distance of this path will only be more than the straight line path because the straight line path uh, is the shortest path between any two cities there cannot be any path uh, which is shorter than the straight line path so what it means is that and the straight line distance that we used as the estimate of the actual cost will only be less than or equal to the actual cost so so this distance will never be greater than the actual cost it will be less than or if the real path is a straight line path then it will be equal to our heuristic function which means the straight line distance heuristic never overestimate the actual cost and that's why your straight line distance is an admissible heuristic so i hope this example explains uh, clearly what is a admissible heuristic so admissible heuristic is a heuristic um that never estimate overestimate the actual cost it always think that the cost of solving the problem is less than what it actually is now for a star search we know we know, we know this evaluation function where f of n f of any node n is equal to z of n plus h of n and we know that gn is the actual cost to reach n from the start node along the current path uh, and since h of n is an estimate and if h of n is a admissible heuristic which means h of n may never overestimate so we have the actual cost plus an estimate which never overestimate and that would mean that fn the evaluation function fn will never overestimate the true cost of a solution from the start node through node n uh, along the current path so examples of admissible heuristic functions we already discussed one for the route finding problem the straight line distance is a uh, admissible heuristic uh, for the eight puzzle problem in the previous class we looked at two different heuristic functions and the first heuristic function was the number of misplaced tiles and the second heuristic function was the manhattan distance and both these heuristics are admissible heuristics uh, 
uh, we looked at the number of misplaced tiles which is used as a heuristic function for the eight puzzle problem so here we count how many tiles are misplaced by comparing the given state with the goal state for example um, if we consider uh, the given state in the given state and the tile 7 is present in first row first column whereas in the goal state the actual position should be the third row second column so definitely your tile 7 is not in the correct place in the given state so tile 7 is misplaced so like that if we try to see how many of the tiles are misplaced in the given state we would see that each of the tiles is mis misplaced and hence the total number of misplaced tiles is 8 and hence the heuristic value for this given state is 8 according to this heuristic function number of misplaced tiles now uh, now the number of so if we now have to go from this start state to this goal state we have to move these tiles to their correct position and in each move we in each step we move only one of the tile so how many steps would we need to make to go from the start state to the goal state the number of steps i will need to make would definitely be greater than eight because in every step i will uh, because every misplaced tile must be moved at least once so if we have to move uh, this tile 7 to its correct position then at least I have to move it by at least one position actually I'll have to move it by more than one position I'll have to actually move by one two three steps and if we consider uh, the blank space I have to bring the blank space here so even uh, more number of steps would be required to take this misplaced tile to its correct position in the goal state um, so hence this number of misplaced tiles is actually is cannot it does not overestimate so this value 8 that we get is actually much less than the actual number of steps that would be required to take each of the misplaced tiles to its correct position and hence uh, this heuristic function is also a admissible heuristic each, each of the misplaced tiles has to be moved at least once actually we have to move it more than one uh, position so the total number of costs will definitely be greater than 8 the next uh, the Manhattan distance is also an admissible heuristic uh, because the number of moves required to reach the goal state will be greater than or equal to the Manhattan distance that's because any move will take only one tile one step closer to the goal uh, and hence this Manhattan distance would also be uh, admissible heuristic next we'll talk about a consistent heuristic uh, so what is a consistent heuristic a heuristic function h of n is consistent or it's also called monotonic if for every node n and every successor n dash of n generated by some action a the estimated cost of reaching the goal from n is no greater than the step cost of getting to n prime n dash uh, plus the estimated cost of reaching the goal from n dash um, so in short form it means that h of n should be less than c plus h of n dash Uh, to explain it further uh, let us consider 
we have a node n uh, and then we have some goal node and we actually do not know what the real cost is from node n to goal node we have not explored the path yet so we estimate it using our heuristic function so h of n is the estimate of the cost uh, that would be required to reach from node n to goal node now we consider uh, some uh, successor of node n which is n prime so now we consider a node n prime which is a successor of node n and let's say c is the actual cost uh, that is required to reach from node n to n prime by performing some action a that's the meaning of this notation so c is the cost of the path of the actual path from node n to n prime n to n prime using action a and now we can also estimate the cost from n prime to goal node and that would be h of n prime now considering these values your the heuristic function h that we are using will be a consistent heuristic if h of n will be less than or equal to c plus h of n prime and that should be true for all node n and for all successor n prime of n so all for all node n and for all successor of n prime of n this inequality should hold then only we can say that that the heuristic function h is a consistent heuristic so i hope this uh, diagram explains what the consistent heuristic is uh, now the straight line distance that we use is a heuristic function for the route finding problem is a consistent heuristic and why is it so that's because of uh, the because of the triangle inequality theorem what is the triangle inequality theorem the, the triangle inequality theorem states that the sum if we have a triangle then sum of uh, two of the sides of the triangle should be greater than or equal to the length of the third side of the triangle so sum of any two sides of a triangle should be greater than or equal to the third side of the triangle so c plus h of n prime should be greater than or equal to h of n that's your triangle inequality theorem and now in case of the route finding problem each of this node will be a city and uh, and the heuristic function that we use is a straight line distance between the two cities so whatever is the straight line distance between city n and the destination city which is h of n this straight line distance is the estimate of the actual distance from node n to the goal node similarly when we consider n prime and the goal node uh, we estimate the actual cost of the distance from city n prime to the destination city using the straight line distance which is h of n prime so these are straight lines in case of the route finding problem because these are straight line distance and now this line represents the actual cost from city n to city n prime so this path need not be a straight line because in reality the path may have some curves and bend um, however uh, these the length of this curved path 
will only be greater than this straight line that I am drawing. So if we consider, if we don't consider the actual path to be a straight line and instead if we consider it to be a curved path, the left hand side of this inequality all will only increase because the value of C will increase the actual cost. So uh, C plus H of N prime since the actual cost will increase, this value will increase and that will only make uh, the inequality even more stronger. Um, however, if we just consider uh, for our discussion, since the straight line distance is less than your uh, curved distance, so for our discussion we can only consider the straight line distance. So when we consider the straight line distance, it becomes a triangle. And now by the triangle inequality theorem, h of n will be less than or equal to c plus h of n prime. So if we consider this to be straight line, then definitely h of n will be less than or equal to c plus h of n prime. And if I, if I consider the curve path, then also uh, h of n will still be less than c of uh, will still be less than c plus h of n prime because the value of c will only increase. Uh, so we see that the straight line distance and this this inequality holds for the straight line distance heuristic and hence the straight line distance heuristic is a consistent heuristic. Uh, similarly, the number of misplaced tiles and the Manhattan distance, uh, these are the heuristic function that we use for the eight puzzle problem. They are also consistent heuristics. And it is possible to prove that all consistent heuristics are actually admissible. So if you have a consistent heuristic, then uh, that particular heuristic function will also be a admissible heuristic function. And it is possible to prove this. However, the opposite may not be true. Just by being admissible, your heuristic function need not be consistent. So with that, I would like to end today's class. In the next class, we will talk about optimality of a star algorithm and there we will try to make use of uh, these concepts of admissible and consistent heuristics. So I would like to end my class here. We will meet again in the next class. Uh, bye.